In this tutorial, we're going to create a simple ident style animation using a keyframed mask to reveal and then hide our text. The first thing you'll need to do is to download some kind of background video. The link to this one's in the description. Once you've downloaded it, drag it from its folder into your source area of After Effects over here. Next, we'll need to go to Composition, New Composition, and we need to make sure it says 1920 by 1080. If you're having issues typing in those numbers, make sure that this box is unchecked. Make the frame rate 25 and make the duration seven seconds long. And then hit OK. Next, we're gonna drag our video that we've just imported over here into our layers area down here. So if you drag this uh, time-lapse video down to the bottom, if you've downloaded someone's video from YouTube, it probably starts off with a black beginning and it's probably got several clips. So you may want to drag this layer to the left to find the ideal starting point of your video. Uh, fortunately, this video has only one clip, so I can drag it pretty much anywhere I like and uh, that should be absolutely fine. Next, we're going to create some text. Uh, so if you go to the very top, you'll see the text tool there or you can hit Command or Control T on the keyboard and click somewhere towards the left center hand side of your uh, work area here. And you can start typing in something uh, like a three or four letter word will be best. Uh, the chances are you're typing it in Arial or something like that. And we're gonna need to change the uh, font size and everything over here. So on the right hand side of After Effects, you should see one of these words should be called character. If you click on that and expand it, you should see your uh, text options here. If you can't find character on the right hand side, um, you can always go to window um, and make sure that character is checked over there. I need to reset that workspace. So in character, I'm gonna change the font to something called Helvetica, uh, which just looks really good for motion graphics. Um, if it's not changing, just make sure you've uh, drag selected your text layer or you've clicked on the text layer down here and then uh, whatever you change here should have an impact on your uh, text. And I'm gonna put the scale up quite high, uh, about f uh, 350 should be fine. And Next, we're going to make the font size, uh, so it's bold up here. You can also make it extra bold down here as well. Um, so if you hit that one, it becomes even clearer. And you can play around with the kerning as well here. I'm going to use a kerning of uh, zero. That should be fine. And then we're going to want to move this text to the middle of our workspace. Uh, so if you get your select tool here or hit V on the keyboard, and you should be able to just click on the text down here and then click on the text here to just drag it into roughly the center of your video, like that. Finally, the color of the text over here we can change. So if you click on this, um, I'm gonna try and use uh, something just slightly off white. I rarely ever use pure white. So something like that should be good. Now we're gonna deselect this layer uh, so that we can draw a new shape layer. So if you click on the empty area down here or the empty area around your video so that no layers are selected, then go and cre uh, create um, a rectangle. So if you hit Q on the keyboard, it should highlight the rectangle tool up here. If one of the other shapes is showing like the rounded rectangle, you may want to click and hold on that and change it to the rectangle tool. And then drag out a rectangle that looks something uh, like this. Make it about as thick as the thickness of your letters and also make it start slightly higher up than your text and end at the bottom slightly lower than your text. So it looks like that flashing cursor thing when you're typing in Word. We need to change the color of this. So if you go to fill at the top and there is a pipette tool on the right hand side, click on that and choose the white color of your text and then hit OK. Now uh, we need to move the center pivot point of this shape layer here. To do that, we need to use a special tool. Um, so if you go up to the top and use the pan behind tool or hit Y on the keyboard. And uh, if, you, if the center point is in the middle of this shape, just double check it really is by clicking on shape layer one and uh, down here. And you should see the center point isn't actually in the middle. So drag that towards the middle of this white rectangle. As uh, long as it's in there somewhere, that'll be fine. 
Now we're going to begin animating this. So if you go to shape layer one, click on it, and uh, there should be a word called transform just beneath it. If there's not, click on the drop down arrow to the left of shape layer one, click on the drop down arrow by transform, and you should see uh, something called position, sorry, scale. And we're going to keyframe the scale. So if you uh, click on, make sure your time slider is at zero, first of all. So it's zero here, and it also says zero over here. We're going to keyframe this. So if you click on the stopwatch, I need to change one of these numbers. Uh, so to change one of them on their own, I'm going to unlink, unlink them by clicking on this button here. And then the 100% on the Y axis over here on the right hand side, I'm going to change that to zero. What that's essentially done is crushed this rectangle uh, so it's completely flat and invisible. And you should see a diamond on your time slider, which means there is a keyframe there. Now go drag your time slider to one second into your video. On your screens, it may look like our 0100F uh, if you've got a very large work area. Next, if you drag the uh, scale so that the number that we just made zero is 100% again. Now if you drag your time slider, you should see you go from the first keyframe here to the new keyframe and it uh, expands out like that. Next, we need to animate the position of this. If you go up to where it says position, make sure your time slider is at one second. If you move your time slider, just hold shift and drag your time slider so it snaps to that keyframe again. Then go to the position keyframe uh, activation button here, and that should create a diamond in line with the second scale keyframe here. Now, if you drag your time slider to two seconds, and we now need to move this shape. We haven't actually got the move tool selected at the moment. We've got the pan behind tool. So if you hit either V on the keyboard or click on the uh, selection tool at the top, you can then move this white rectangle to the right hand side of your text over here. Um, if you hold shift as you move it, it should go perfectly horizontal and then you can uh, let go of that. Now what we want to do is tell After Effects to make this shape stay there for two seconds. Usually it creates a keyframe. Whenever we move uh, something around, it automatically creates a keyframe. Now we actually don't want to move it, we want it to stay in place. So there's a button over here uh, which will create a keyframe anyway at the current time, even though nothing changed. Make sure it's the one next to your position uh, over here. So click on that and you'll see a keyframe appear in your position row like that. Now drag your time slider to five seconds. And you could manually move this white rectangle back to the left hand side or to be even more accurate and precise you can get the very first keyframe in your position row, the one that's at one second. Click on it so that it goes blue, hit Control or Command C for copy and then Command V for paste and you should see it pop back to the left hand side. If you drag your time slider now you'll see it grows out like this, it goes across and then goes back again after uh, two seconds. We now want it to crush back down so it's completely flat again. Um, and instead of typing in these numbers myself, which take too long, I can get this keyframe here for my scale row. This is the final keyframe on the scale row. I'm going to do the opposite of these now. So if I copy this one, Control C, and make sure my time slide is at exactly five seconds, hit Control V or Command V, and then get the first keyframe of when it's completely flat and hit uh, Command C and then at six seconds, paste that over there, Command V. So I've basically done the opposite of what these two keyframes are here. So it should now do this. If you hit spacebar to preview your video, uh, you can do that as well. So it moves over there and then moves back and hides again, which is good. Next, we need to create a mask to hide our text with uh, as the uh, white bar moves over it. To create a mask, move your time slider to exactly one second. If you hold shift on the keyboard, Again, your time slider will snap to exactly those keyframes. Select your red text layer, and then with the red text layer selected, we're actually gonna use the very same create rectangle tool that we used before. Because a layer is now selected, it will create a mask instead of a white shape. So click on that, and you're gonna to wanna to create a rectangle that looks roughly like this. Uh, what's important is that the right-hand side of this mask is cutting through the white bar here. Um, just to clarify what this is doing, once in a, in a moment when we animate this we can move it over to the right and you can see it reveals your text. But for now keep the right hand side of it exactly down the middle of that white bar like that. And just to be safe I've made mine slightly taller at the top and bottom as well. Now we want to select these points on the edge so we're going to go back to our selection tool up here or hit V on the keyboard 
And the easiest way of doing this uh, for beginners is to simply click on either the red bar of your text layer or the name of your text layer over here. You'll see that the corner points of this rectangle have now become circles, which means you can click on them individually like this. I have clicked on one up there and then hold shift, click on the one at the bottom. So they only have the two uh, vertices on the right hand side selected. We need to, before we move this, uh, I nearly forgot, we need to keyframe this so that at one second, the shape of this mask is there. So go to where it says mask one, click on the drop down arrow by mask one, just to clarify if you can't see this, make sure you click on the drop down arrow by your red text layer, drop down under masks, and drop down under mask one. Under mask one, you'll see something called mask path. Click on that, uh, or keyframe that, sorry, and you'll see a keyframe at one second into your video, just before this white bar starts to move. Now drag your time slider to two seconds, and again, I need to select those two points, so click on the red bar of your text layer, or the name of it, and uh, click on the two points on the right hand side and now move them both over to the opposite side of the video and again keep that white bar like that so that the line goes down the middle of it. Now drag your time slider to four seconds and we can actually copy and paste these keyframes to make life easier. So again we're going to do the opposite or inverse of this. So I want this keyframe first, hit com uh, command C for copy at four seconds, hit command V for paste and then get the first keyframe, command C for copy, and then at five seconds, uh, hold shift so that your time slider snaps to exactly five second keyframes. We're now gonna hit command V for paste so that the um, mask is back exactly where it started again. Now, if you drag your time slider, it should, the mask should follow the white bar as it moves over your text like that. Um, it's nearly done. The final thing we need to do is add some special effects to make it look even more professional. So if you just click on your VFX layers name and your shape and then hold shift and select your shape layer one layer name and then hit U on the keyboard, U will sort of hide all the other attributes and only show the attributes that you've keyframed, which means you can see all these keyframes in the same area. So if you, at any point in time now, drag select these we're going to do something called easy ease which smooths everything out just to clarify what this is if you watch your animation at the moment you'll see that the animation is quite rigid there's no acceleration and it looks quite unnatural uh, you may you should notice the difference in a second so drag select all those keyframes so they go blue don't miss any out and then right click on any one of them go to keyframe assistant and go to easy ease they'll all change into these sort of hourglass shapes. Now, if you preview your video, it should look a lot smoother. There'll be acceleration and deceleration in the animations of your mask and a white bar. So now it looks even better. The final step is to add motion blur, something that the human eye sees naturally. We want to see this again in any moving parts of our video. So to do that, we'll turn on motion blur with uh, this button right here. So it looks like a stack of circles. Just beneath it, on shape layer one, the white bar, activate that by clicking in the empty box beneath it. You still can't see this having any effect on your video until you hit uh, activate it up here. And now you should see that your white text, your white bar actually has a bit of blur while it's moving, which should add to the uh, realism and make your video just that much nicer. The final step is to make sure you've trimmed the end of your video down, so if you um, if your animation's finished at six seconds, you may just want to make sure that you trim the edge of a video down a bit, but I'm happy with seven seconds. Now you can go to um, your media encoder queue and render that off in there.